Ah, my head. How long was I out? Hello? Is anyone there? Where is everyone? Oh my god, I finally found someone. Hey! Keep it down, the infected might hear you. The infected? Take a look for yourself, kid. Wait, why would anyone watch that? They're all the same. What a bunch of zombies. Oh, I get it. Well, you know, actually, I kind of like some of those guys. Welcome back, Planeswalkers. How you doing? How you doing? You're watching the Manamu channel, the only place on YouTube that gives you the ultimate deck list. And today, we're continuing our viewer requested commander with Ghost of Ramirez de Petro and Tormod the Desecrator. That's right, we have partners for today's commander video, and boy do these cards form a dream team. Ghost of Ramirez is a 1 blue and 2 colorless 2-3 spirit pirate that can't be blocked by creatures with 3 toughness or greater, and when he deals combat damage to a player, we can turn one card from our graveyard that was discarded or put from our library this turn to our hand. We're already looking at some hoops, but wait, there's more! Our commander, Tormad the Desecrator, a 1 black and 3 colorless 4-2 zombie wizard, says whenever one or more cards leave our graveyard, we create a tapped 2-2 black zombie token. So if the loop isn't obvious, these cards will work together to create a zombie armory by returning a card from our graveyard to our hand. The plan is simple. We'll play lots of zombie lords and make lots of zombie tokens. Then we'll discard these lords with our key cards, and then return said lords to our hand with one of our commanders, and then play that lord to buff the tokens that we made from doing the cycle. Is this deck slow? Yes, but if anything, that's a flavor win since this is a zombie deck, and if you're scared about winning the game, then there are some magic strategies that may help you. Now, if you'd like a deck list done with your favorite commander, leave it in the comments or join our Discord. So, starting off with our creatures, we have Champion of the Perished because this card can grow with each zombie that ETBs, and well, our whole deck is about making zombies, so this card's a no-brainer, no pun intended. Cryptbreaker, the standard all-star, is back with a vengeance since this card lets us draw cards, discard, and then make a zombie token. Gravecrawler naturally works well with Tor Mod since it leaves the graveyard easily. Stitcher Supplier is here to fill our graveyard and then give Ramirez a chance to return some of those cards. An Undead Augur draws cards anytime a zombie dies. Yes, even our tokens. Undead Butler fills the graveyard and returns a card, triggering our commander. Arch Ghoul of Thraven gives us card advantage whenever a zombie dies, including the tokens. And we can throw those cards in our graveyard if we want some added value. Cemetery Reaper is a lord that has utility stapled to it. Death Baron is one of our best lords since it gives death touch. Diagraph Crafton is a lord and an aristocrat for our zombies. Diagraph Colossus makes tokens when we cast our zombie spells and gets swole based on the number of zombies we control. Gleaming Overseer gives our zombie tokens hexproof and menace. Headless Rider is a board wipe protection except for certain board wipes. Lord of the Accursed is a zombie lord that gives menace to all the zombies. Lord of the Undead can return a zombie card from our graveyard to our hand so we can discard them again. Master of Death importantly fills our graveyard while also giving us a trigger when it's in the graveyard for Tormod. Homebound Lich is card advantage that lets us discard a card. And remember, this is a damage trigger, so with Ghost of Ramirez, we can stack them if they both swing in and return whatever card we discarded with Tomebound Lich to our hand, so that's a neat little synergy. Undead Gladiator has Cycle and a discard ability printed on it when it's in the graveyard, so it's perfect for Ramirez triggers. Cleave Scab can copy our zombie lords and then put them in the graveyard for Ramirez. Keep in mind, none of our zombie lords are legendary. Gisa and Giralf stalk the graveyard and let us cast a zombie spell from our graveyard once a turn, which triggers Tormod. Merkwood Bats is an honorary zombie because we plan to make a lot of tokens, and once they're dead, it's going to trigger again, so it drains when we make them and drains when they die. Perfect. Undead Wartreef makes zombies cheaper while buffing them, and Violent Tumor is right at home in this deck since we can tutor a card and then return it with a damage trigger from Ghost of Ramirez. We'll hide the Rot Cleaver, gives us more zombie tokens and card draw. Grey Merchant of Aspidel is in the deck because we can loop it in our graveyard, and it can just end games when you play it without even abusing it. Horde Wing Scab gives our zombies flying and lets us loot when we deal damage to our opponents. Nefiri Betrayer King is a lord that can trigger our commander Tormod when we have three Snowlands, which we're playing. 
Noxious Ghoul can clear a board of non-zombies on one of our good turns, but most of the time it'll clear off any token strategies your opponents are up to. Hopefully it's not zombies. Gem Palm Polluter is a great removal spell in our deck because we can cycle it and then return it with Ramirez, and we have a couple other cards to return it as well. But basically it's a reoccurring removal spell in this deck. Lastly, Grave Titan because we love zombie tokens and this thing pumps them out while also having a sizable body to swing with. Now we are playing two Planeswalkers, but I'm also going to throw in one of our battles in this slot. So first we have Liliana, Untouched by Death, to play zombies from our graveyard primarily, but also it's plus one, just mills cards, which is perfect for Ramirez, and it's minus is removal, so that's always, you know, situational and good most of the time. Liliana, Dread Horde General, because it makes tokens, it removes them, and then draws those cards while doing so. And our battle is Invasion of Amonkhet because it mills us cards, draws us a card, makes our opponent discard a card, and then once we flip it, we can copy a creature from a graveyard, which is just, it's too much value to pass up. Our first spell is Eaten Alive as it exiles a card and we have no shortage of expendable creatures. Entomb to tutor a card and then return it with Ghost of Ramirez. Reanimate to get an easy trigger for Tormod or steal a strong creature from an opponent. Unearth will return a Lord of our choice to the battlefield from the graveyard giving another Tormod trigger. Corpse Churn to help fill our graveyard for Ramirez. Counterspell to give us some protection against combo players, but most of the time we're going to want to use this for the graveyard hate. Cyclonic Rift, since no one expects the Demir zombie player to have mass bounce. Usually though, if we play this card, we should be able to swing out and kill at least one player. Exhume to bring a creature back, and the old turn one Entomb to turn two Exhume is a sweet little combo that you can pull off that's fun. Feed the Swarm is removal that hits enchantments. Frantic Search works well since it draws us cards. We can discard a Lord, untap three lands, then return the Lord with our commander, and then play the Lord. Or worst case, discard a counter spell, get it back, and then have the untapped mana to basically play it on our opponent's turn. Speaking of counterspell, we play Saw it Coming, but feel free to insert the counterspell of choice in this slot like Mana Drain. Victimize is a sweet card, as we could sacrifice a token and then return two creatures from our graveyard to the battlefield. Now, for our artifacts and enchantments, I'll start with the ramp. We have Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, and Demir Signet, followed by Thought Vessel, Crowded Crypt for extra tokens in the late game, and Heraldic Banner on black most of the time for a board-wide buff. Now, for our graveyard strategies, we have Phyrexian Reclamation to return a creature to our hand, Mask of the Schemer to connive away cards to the graveyard, Tortured Existence to return more creatures to our hand while giving Ramirez a card to target, Necromancer's Stockpile is a discard outlet that makes zombie tokens, Cemetery Tampering is an easy way to fill our graveyard every turn, and then later it gives us a free spell. We're more of the dead as a discard outlet that can turn into a Rise of the Dark Realms. Now for random includes, we have Lightning Griefs to give haste to Ramirez or Grave Titan, Wand of Orcus gives death touch to our zombies and the attacker, plus we make a lot of zombie tokens when that creature deals damage. Endless Ranks of the Dead will double our number of zombie tokens, Necrodudality also doubles our zombies in a way, but it's really just copying our non-token zombies when they ETB, and Rooftop Storm makes all our zombie spells free, and we'll finish off this section. For the mana base, do what's best for your budget, but feel free to copy the mana base in the deck list found in the description of this video. Good lands to include are going to be Crypt of Agadim, since we plan on put filling our graveyard with a lot of creatures, and Unholy Grotto as an easy way to basically trigger Tormod. Now there are no combos in the deck. I kept this list tame compared to my Scarab God list, which does include zombie combos. So if you want to see some zombie combos, you can always check that video out. But if you do want to include an easy combo in this deck, it actually only needs one card and that's a sacrifice outlet. For example, Carrion Feeder, it's a zombie, it grows, perfect for this. So what happens is you can loop your Grey Merchant with Liliana Untouched by Death and Rooftop Storm infinitely to drain the entire table. So as long as you have a sacrifice outlet in the deck, you can do that. That's going to do it for today's video, and I do hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know how I did in the comments or ramble about the lack of the one ring in the deck list. I'll be seeing you in the next video. Peace.